Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and today we're gonna eat at a restaurant that I've wanted to eat at for a very, very long time and wasn't able to eat at until very, very recently due to it being closed for a really long time. The famous, legendary, and historical Delmonico Steakhouse. Now, Delmonico's is not just one of the oldest steakhouses in the US, it is the oldest fine dining restaurant in all of America. Now, whether or not you consider Delmonico's the oldest steakhouse in the US and in New York City, is kind of up to how you define oldest. Because if you want to consider the oldest as being the most continuously running, then that would be Old Homestead Steakhouse, which we ate at in a prior video. Old Homestead is the oldest continuously operating steakhouse, and in this case, the original version of Delmonico's from the original owners and founders actually closed in, I believe, the 1920s or 30s. It reopened later, but under new ownership. So the Delmonico's after that period, not the same one, so Old Homestead gets the edge there. But whether you consider Delmonico's the oldest steakhouse in the US, one of the oldest, top two, top three, one thing's for sure is that this place is known for history and for amazing food. And I mean, just look at the building. The building alone is like a work of art. Really, really fancy. It's almost like I'm eating at like Gringotts or something from Harry Potter. Now, history aside, Lots of people consider Delmonico's among the best steakhouses and restaurants in the whole world. And Delmonico's is credited with inventing lots of legendary dishes such as Eggs Benedict, the Wedge Salad, and of course, the Delmonico Steak. The reason we haven't been able to eat here for a while is because during COVID, Delmonico's actually closed temporarily or we all hope temporarily, because they closed during COVID, but then they became embroiled in a bunch of drama involving a dispute with their landlord over the lease. And for a while, it seemed like the restaurant was never gonna reopen and it was permanently closed. But luckily for us, they found a way to reopen and they were able to reach an agreement. So because of that, Delmonico's opened about a month ago or a few weeks ago. So we're finally able to try this place. So let's go see if it's all it's cracked up to be. Come on, let's go. We are seated inside the famous and historical Delmonico Steakhouse. I've wanted to eat here for so long, but I haven't been able to because of it being closed for so many years due to the pandemic and all the drama. And I gotta say, this is one of the most beautiful restaurants I have ever seen. Maybe I'm just not the bougiest person, the most fanciest person out there, but I feel like this is one of the nicest restaurants I have been in at least in a long time, if not ever. So they brought me the menu as well as the drink menu, but I sent the drink menu back because I don't really drink, but let's take a look. What I hear is that this restaurant retained a lot of their classics, but they also changed some things up. Like I hear their new chef wanted to add like a little bit of old and new from what I hear. So they have some nice cold options and some general appetizers. Apparently Delmonico's invented the wedge salad or they claim to be one of the people who invented it so we might get this uh, 26 bucks for a wedge salad is a little steep but I guess we'll do it for you guys and then of course we got all our entrees everything seems to have some sort of meat or seafood spin to it for example this isn't just tortellini this is a short rib tortellini but the steaks are what we're here for steaks are what put this place on the map so much so that the Delmonico steak is named after this restaurant man as as much as I want to try all of these, filet mignon, bone-in ribeye, New York strip, I guess we got to go with the signature Delmonico. Uh, 79 bucks for what's basically a boneless ribeye. A little on the pricey side, but I guess this is a famous restaurant and they're the inventor and master of this steak. So I guess we'll just have to see how signature and how good it is. So let's do a wedge salad and a Delmonico steak. Oh, I'm waiting for my server. Sorry? Oh, I'm waiting yeah. for my server. Uh, I am, yes. Oh, 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 that's yes, it? Oh, that's okay. I wasn't sure. I didn't want to uh, <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so I'll do two things. I'll do the I'll do the wedge salad. The wedge salad? Okay. And then I'll do the signature Delmonico. The wedge salad and the signature Delmonico? Yep. And how do you like your steak prepared, sir? Uh, medium. Perhaps uh, like a side dish with the Delmonico steak? Uh, 
what would you recommend? Um, hmm. The hash browns is very interesting. They have the mashed potatoes, pom puree. Hey, you know what? Let's do let's do hash browns. Let's try that. The hash browns. You said that's pretty interesting. Yes, yes. Nice. It's very good. Right, I can't wait. Yes. I'll start with the wedge salad and then I'll serve the steak and hash browns after the wedge salad. Excellent. Thank you. All right, so we were going to get just two items, the wedge salad and the steak. But he talked me into getting the hash brown, so... You know, Wolfgang Steakhouse makes a mean hash brown dish, as well as St. Anselm's, so... We'll see how it is here. Okay, as always at these steakhouses, the bread is the first thing to arrive. And I gotta say, it uh, does not look half bad. I kind of like this, this crust. It's a very promising looking crust. So I guess let's review the bread as we always do on this channel. Actually, let's get a shot with some better lighting. Mmm. Mmm, really good. Unlike other butters we've tried at steakhouses on this channel, the butter is nice and whipped. It's not super hard and, you know, me filming by myself, it's pretty easy for me to spread with just one hand. So it's nice and whipped as you can see. Almost kind of resembles like whipped cream that you'd get on like a sundae. Pretty good butter, tastes really fresh, nice and creamy. Hmm. Let's hope our steak and salad come soon. Tomato, enjoy. Thank you. Okay, the wedge salad has arrived. And let's move the light source closer. And I gotta say, this is definitely not what I was expecting. I've had wedge salad at a lot of these steakhouses. I think these are pieces of bacon stood up surrounding the whole thing. And I guess the lettuce is that piece in the middle, you know? It almost looks like a onion or something, but no, I guess it's a round piece of lettuce on the inside and not like a triangular wedge. And it's also got some like tomatoes on it as well, it looks like, fresh tomatoes. So, let's just... Okay, let's try this fresh white salad. Mmm. The dressing is really, really good. It's got like this sour flavor, like a lemony flavor, but not overwhelmingly sour and overwhelmingly of lemon and a bit of a vinegar flavor as well. I really, really like it. I mean, I've had wedge salad at lots of places and I wasn't really sure how they could reinvent the wheel, but they definitely put a nice spin on it. This might be one of those put a spin on it dishes from the new chef because this is definitely different from any wedge salad I've ever had. If this is new, I like it. Let's try a tomato. Just a disclaimer, I do not like tomatoes at all. But we're gonna try it anyways. You know, I don't usually like tomatoes, but I kind of like that. I usually don't like tomatoes because I find them to be too soft. Uh, they kind of have like the texture of fruit, but not quite the sweetness that fruit has. But I kind of like these. I mean, they're not too squishy and uh, they're juicy, but not too much so. I like the texture of these. Guess I better soak in those tomato nutrients that I don't usually eat while I can. I guess let's try a piece of bacon. I don't know how I'm gonna pick this up with a fork, so let's just, uh, let's just go to town on this with our fingers. Very, very thin and flat piece of bacon. Don't know if I've ever seen a bacon like this before. It's almost like deep fried prosciutto, the way it looks. Mm. I think this is the best bacon I've ever had in my life. You get that oiliness, that pork fat flavor. It's not too crispy, it's the perfect crisp level. It's like eating like a chip or something. Like a bacon potato chip. And like that smoky bacon flavor is amplified here. The only thing I may not like is while bacon is salty, I find this to be a tad overly salty for me, a little bit, maybe like 10 or 15%. So if they can dial down the saltiness by 10, 15%, it's gonna be great but it's already really good. I'm gonna keep eating this, and then we'll review the steak. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Wow. wow, these are the hash browns. All right, guys, our food just arrived. Let me show you what we got. Ooh, actually, the plate's a little hot. So we have our Delmonico steak. And we have our hash browns. This is not at all what I was expecting with the hash browns. I thought it was gonna be like a flat, more pancake-like thing. Sorry guys, uh, the lighting is not the best, so I'm just kind of playing around with, 
you know, I'm doing my best with what I have. But yeah, so this is the Delmonico steak. Basically a boneless ribeye. I think some places use chuck eye. I hope this place is still using ribeye, especially for the 80 bucks that I paid. With some fried onions on top. I think these might be mini onion rings or something like that. But yeah, I gotta say, this steak is not looking bad. It's actually a pretty decent portion as well. Not the biggest portion, but not the smallest. Steak first before it gets cold. Okay, first let's take a look at the cook. I don't know about you guys, but that looks like medium rare to me, so the cook at least is spot on. Yeah, it looks nice and pink and a little red. That's pretty much exactly the way I like my steak. I'm just gonna say it. I think that might be the best steak I've ever had in my life. And we've eaten lots of steaks on this channel. I think this place takes the cake. It's just got an amazing, beautiful crust throughout the whole steak. Amazing crust and seasoning throughout. In fact, let's see if this crust is on both sides of the steak. Okay, less of a crust on this side, but still existent. You know, obviously, maybe a little bit too much to expect it to be completely even on both sides, but on this side, just an amazing crust throughout. A black pepper crust. I detect some other seasonings as well. It tastes really, really good. Oops, I knocked some of my onions off. So let's add these back on. But let me tell you, this steak, it's a ribeye. And ribeye is always the juiciest, most marbled cut. But this is just the most tender, most marbled, most fatty, juicy steak I've ever had. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, some parts of the steak are more medium than medium rare. This definitely looks a little more evenly pink and more of a medium than a medium rare to me. So I guess the steak isn't cooked completely evenly throughout, but it's still juicy and it's still tasty. Even at a medium, the fat is rendered evenly throughout and you can't really ask for a much better steak, even if it's cooked a little bit more than you prefer. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I don't know where they're getting their meat from, but their meat source is amazing. It's really, really good quality meat. Really, really well marbled. A place like this must be dry aging their own meat. All the best steak houses in New York dry age their own meat in-house. They must be doing that here just to bring out its amazing, natural, delicious, juicy ribeye flavor. And, uh, it's just incredible. Let's try it with some of these fried onions, why don't we? Hmm, okay, so not bad, but I kind of view the fried onions as more of a less edible garnish, more of like a design choice, an aesthetic choice, and less of like something that you really should eat. Because to be honest, the onions, if I can be honest, are a little bit greasy, a little bit oily. When you eat the steak with the onions, it kind of makes the whole thing a little too strong oniony in flavor. And not like a pleasant fresh onion taste. It kind of tastes a little bit like Burger King onion rings. And I like Burger King onion rings, but not necessarily on a amazing Delmonico steak, you know? So to be honest, if you're eating here, I would just not do the onions at all. Uh, you know, it kind of clashes with the steak and the seasoning already on the steak. So just stick with the meat itself and you're gonna have a great time. Man, this is so good. I kind of just want some alone time with my steak. But let's take one more bite and then we'll review the hash brown. All right, last juicy, delicious bite. Mmm. I mean, don't just take my word for it. Just look at the steak. Doesn't that just look so pink and juicy and delicious to you? I mean, just look at how tender it is. It's not hard at all. Just look at how soft it is. And it's juicy and it's got a good sear and a good pepper crust on it. Just take off the onions. Everything else about this steak is just amazing. Anyways, I am going to work on this slowly later on. But before we go, let's try the hash brown, and I've never eaten a round hash brown before. Hmm. 
This hash brown was highly recommended, and what I like about it is it's really fluffy on the inside. I really like the interior. It has some good things going for it. I mean, it's crunchy on the outside as well, but the whole thing is just really lacking in seasoning. I mean, it looks anything but bland, right? Like, it looks breathtaking when you see it, but unfortunately, it's just really lacking in salt and pepper, and it doesn't really have much seasoning on it. Let me tell you, eating potatoes without enough salt, always a lame experience. Basically like eating chalk. In this case, like fried chalk. But maybe these uh, fixings on top will help. I think this is some sort of like, what is this, like a jam or something? And some onions, and let's try it with some of this sour cream. Uh, uh. Okay, at this place, I would say generally just kind of stick to steak. The steak was unbelievably good, at least to me. This sauce that they have on top is really off-putting. Like, I think these onions are pickled, and the sauce, I think, kind of has some pickly flavor in it, but it really does not taste balanced. It just doesn't work, to be honest. It kind of just tastes like eating a bunch of mismatched flavors. Like, this sauce almost tastes like some sort of caramelized onion, almost like chili onion type consistency. It doesn't really work with the pickled onions, and this sour cream just tastes like sour cream from a grocery store it really does not work together so this dish i gotta say visually striking but unfortunately not really for me the steak though incredible i could eat the steak so many times and never get tired of it all right guys i was gonna end the video with the steak and the hash brown but some other restaurant patrons they convinced me to try the baked alaska and apparently that's what this restaurant is really known for almost more so than the steak and i'm glad these friendly restaurant patrons i'm glad that they convinced me to try this because this just looks like a really beautiful dessert and i have never quite seen anything like this in my entire life now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about baked Alaskas, uh, but a quick Google search reveals that it's made with, I believe, ice cream and meringue. Uh, looks like it might be melting, so we got to act fast. And apparently this dessert was invented here at Delmonico's almost 200 years ago, in 1867, I believe. Huh. I detected a bit of like an orange flavor. I think that might be the ice cream on the inside. I think that's what this is. So yeah, it's pretty hard. Let's, okay. It looks like there's like some ice cream and I think some cake on the inside as well. So I don't usually eat desserts like this, but hey, when in Rome. Very interesting. I have never had anything like this in my entire life. It looks like they kind of have some cake on the bottom. I think this might be like ladyfingers or something like that. Then you get a layer of ice cream and some toasted cream on top. It's a very, very creative dessert. It almost looks like a white pineapple or like, you know, like a Super Saiyan or something like that if you like Dragon Ball Z. So it looks really cool and it's plated really beautifully. I wonder if it's always looked like this since the 1800s. You kind of have to eat everything all together for this dessert. You can't really eat it in pieces or it doesn't really work. But ugh, it is quite hard. You know, that's interesting. You know, I'm not gonna say I don't like this. It's definitely a really creative and a really interesting dessert. I'm glad I tried it. For me personally, this is just my take. I kind of just want to eat the ice cream and the cookie cake thing on its own. For me, the whipped cream kind of has like a interesting aftertaste, almost like a limey sort of taste. And it's not personally for me, but one thing's for sure, it's a very creative dessert. It's a breathtaking dessert. And I'm glad I tried it because it was invented here. And it's been legendary at this restaurant for almost 200 years. Although I can't say I'm pleased with the price. 26 bucks is a little steep for any dessert. But yeah, guys, I think we're gonna end the video. All in all, this was a great restaurant, Delmonico's. I will say that I didn't like everything here. For me, the baked Alaska wasn't for me. And I really did not like the hash brown at all. But the steak was just incredible. Now, it was very expensive. I'm not sure if it was worth 80 bucks. I think it was a little bit overpriced due to this place's name. 80 bucks, a little bit steep, but it was the best steak I've ever had personally. So if you're willing to shell out 80 bucks to try this place once, I think it's worth it. 
But yeah, anyways guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've been to Delmonico's before, or if you prefer a different steakhouse anywhere in the world, let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. They baked this Alaska just for me, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste. Until next time, I'll see you later.